So now that we've finished talking about sequences, we're ready to start talking about series. And just like we did with sequences, let's start with a definition of what a series is. A series is basically a sum. That's all it is. When we're summing a finite number of terms, we generally call it a finite series. And we've come across several of these in the past. For example, um, we talked about the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 dot 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 to n. Okay. And if you remember before, we said this was n over n plus 1 divided by 2. So this is a well-known finite series. But most often we're interested in the sum of an infinite number of terms. In that case we call it an infinite series. And we've also seen examples of this too. When we looked at the geometric series, this was a sum of an infinite number of terms. Okay? And of course there are many, many more. Uh, we're going to see soon that sine x is basically expressible as an infinite series and so is cosine of x and e to the x and etc cetera, etc cetera. Okay. so there are a lot of things that are expressed as infinite series that we're interested in in generally when we just say the word series we mean infinite series so when we want to talk about a finite series, we're going to have to come out and generally say it. Now there's a problem with summing up an infinite number of terms. We can't write down all the terms. So we need some sort of notation to make things simple. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to label um, the terms in the sum. So the first term we're going to call a1, the second term a2, the third term a3, etc., etc. And then we're going to write the sum using sigma notation. So, for example, if we had a, a, a finite sum, and let's actually look at um, the one that we were, just, we were just looking at. We'll call this uh, equation 1. Call this equation 2. And this 3. Okay, we could, we could re-express it using this thing called summation notation or sigma notation. Okay, where well, this is really an instruction. It says start at j equal to 1 and sum up all the numbers up to n. Okay, so this would be how we would rewrite um, equation 1. And of course, if we have an infinite sum, we know that um, there's not going to be an upper limit. We're going to have an infinite number of terms. So here we might write something like this. Now we're going to generally use n and we might write something like this. This would be equal to that geometric series that we just saw a second ago. Okay. And of course in general if we have a general series we would we would just write it like this. This is for a this is for the general series a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus dot dot dot. Okay, and I think this summation notation you're probably pretty familiar with. But what's kind of a new concept and what's going to be interesting is we want to look at the question of what it means for a series to converge. And what I want to do is just show you a really simple example. Let's go back to our, our geometric series, okay? So now I'm going to write it like this. And what I want to do is I want to form what we're going to call the partial sums. Okay, I want to look at the partial sums. In other words, this is going to be the sum starting from 1 and going up to some index. Okay, so we're going to we're going to define S1 as basically the first term. Okay. You know, in 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 general this would be A1. But for the our geometric series, it's just going to be 1. So this is called the first partial sum. The second partial sum would be the sum up to the second term. 
So this would be, um, you know, 1 over 2 to the 0 plus 1 half. Or in general, it would be a1 plus a2. And we can keep on doing this, and we can actually talk now about the nth partial sum. All right, this would be 1 plus 1 half plus dot 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 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. Or in general, this would just be the sum of the first n terms. Okay? And if, and if we look at this, and we look at the plot of the partial sums, okay, if we actually work this out, we computed these things, we would see something like this. We would see that these partial sums would begin to approach 1. The first one would be 1. The second partial sum, so this would be S1 right here, the second partial sum would be one and a half. Okay, and we'd keep on getting closer and closer. This would be 1.75. Okay. So this would be one. S1 is equal to one. S2 is the first two terms summed. Okay, S3. and so on. And what we'd see is we'd see that this sequence of partial sums would converge to 2. Okay, if we actually work through this, and I'm going to show this in a second, we would actually see that these partial sums converge to 2. And so this is how we show that a sequence, a series, converges. We can show a series converges if and only if its partial sums converge. And in fact, the limit of its partial sums is actually the value of the series. So we can say the following. We can say that is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the partial sums. Okay? And so this is how we're going to show that a series converges. We're going to look at the limit of its partial sums. And let's actually show how this works for the geometric series. So if we go back to our example with the with the uh, geometric series where a n is equal to 1 over 2 to the n minus 1, here's what we know. We can, we can actually show, and we did this before, we can show that the first n terms actually sum to 1 minus 1 half to the nth over 1 minus 1 half. Okay, this was actually an exam problem we had. This was actually a problem uh, on the last exam. Well, on the next to the last exam. It was in the pre-calc exam. And so it, we can go ahead and, of course, we can write this as, as two times this. But here's the point, is that when I, when, I, when I take this limit now, when I take the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn, this becomes the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 times 1 minus 1 over 2 to the nth. And we just saw in the last section that this last term goes to 0. This is equal to the limit of n goes to the infinity of 2 minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. And we know this limit goes to 0, and so we're left with 2. And so this is equal to, now what we can say is, we can say that is equal to 2. The series is equal to the limit of the partial sums, which is 2. And this is how we're generally going to um, 
evaluate uh, series. Now it's important to understand that there are different types of convergences. This is not quite so obvious. The first type of convergence is called absolute convergence. And so I'm going to draw some, some generic series, n equal 1 to infinity of a n. I'm going to call this S. Okay. In an absolute convergence, we say that a series converges absolutely if and only if the series of its absolute values converges. So we say that n equal 1 to uh, infinity of a n converges absolutely if and only if the series of its absolute values converge. Okay? So that's, that's the first type of convergence. The second type of convergence is called conditional convergence. And this is a series that converges, but not absolutely. So this is a, this is a situation where the series converges, but not absolutely. Does not converge. Okay. These are the two different uh, types of convergence we're going to talk about. Now, we're mostly interested in absolute convergence, and we're going to pretty much focus on that. But there are some important series that converge conditionally, and I'll show you one. It's the natural log of two. So this is, happens to be one. And this is negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n. Okay. This series converges, but the absolute value um, of those terms um, does not give a convergent series. So this thing converges, but we will show that if we take the series of its absolute values, this does not converge. This is called the harmonic series. And there are a few others that we'll, we'll work with also. Now there's a reason why um, there's a reason why we're interested in absolute convergence and there's also a reason why the other um, series is called conditional convergence. Okay, the reason why is because if we rearrange the terms in a conditional um, conditionally convergent series will get a different answer. Okay, that's what the that's what the conditional means. It means that it converging to a certain value is conditioned on the terms in the series being in a certain order. And in fact, Riemann proved a theorem that said take any conditionally convergent series and now choose any real number that you want and you can rearrange the terms in the series so that they equal that arbitrarily chosen real number. And that's the reason why it's called conditionally convergent, because what it adds up to is dependent on the order of the terms. And it's also the reason why we're generally not very interested in these series, because of the fact that um, they, their values dependent upon the order of the, of the terms. And we generally don't like that. That's, that's, not, a, that's not a desirable property. Okay. That's all the basics we need to know to get started. Next, we'll actually see um, how to tell if series converge.